Ah, ça. Merhabalar. Ee, takipçilerimizi bekliyoruz. Birazdan çok etkili, çok önemli bir e, konuşma gerçekleşecek. Ee, bugün önemli bir konuğumuz var. Daha değil, daha başlamayalım. Evet, bugün çok önemli bir konuğumuz var. Herkes e, katıldıktan sonra başlatacağım e, konuşmaları. Hoş geldiniz hepiniz. So welcome everybody. Today we have a, a very influential talk with a very influential person from the world event industry. I hope everyone will benefit from that. Çok güzel bir konuşma olacak. Sizin sorularınızı da alacağız. So we will have also your questions. Uh, so let me introduce uh, let me introduce our guest today. Uh, it's the first uh, Tuet Talks. It will be the first Tuet Talks. Uh, in each Tuet Talk, we'll be hosting uh, a person, a very important guest from the world event industry, uh, who will influence us uh, with his thoughts and ideas and his talks. Uh, as you all know, TÜVET is the Turkish International Events Association. Hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Uh, bugün çok önemli bir konuğumuz var, uh, Doktor uh, Elin Kamso. Uh, kendisi birazdan konuğumuz olacak. Uh, benim çok değer verdiğim bir dostum. Dünya etkinlik endüstrisinin en önemli 50 kişisinden biri. Uh, Birazdan katılacak. Ben Doktor Eling Hamso'yu şöyle bir anlatmak istiyorum. Doktor Eling Hamso is managing partner of Event ROI Institute. He is a consultant and an educator, and he is a leader expert on how to measure results from meetings and events. Uh, and he is a consultant to many event agencies uh, as well as corporate event planners. Uh, Dr. Eding Hamso, uh, Events ROI Institute'un yönetici ortağı, kendisi bir danışman ve Avrupa'daki özellikle çok önemli e, etkinlik e, şirketlerine, ajanslarına e, kendisi e, danışmanlık veriyor ve aynı zamanda bir eğitimci, eğitimleri var çok önemli ROI Institute'da. E, bugün onun düşünceleri çok önemli, bize büyük bir perspektif sağlayacağını düşünüyorum. E, çok değer verdiğim bir insan ve yeni normalleri konuşuyoruz. Konuşacağız. Yeni normaller ne olacak? Ee, yeni normalimiz ne olacak bundan sonra? Özellikle e, etkinlik endüstrisinde bizi neler bekliyor? Bunlar üzerine fokuslanacağız. Ee, kabul edelim mi ee, Edingham soyu? Ee, yes, he is here. Yes, we are connecting to the Edingham so. Uh, he will be with us in few seconds, I guess. I hope there will not be any connection uh, mistake. Hello. Oh, oh. <laughs> How are you, Dr. Edikam? So, how is everything? I'm very good, thank you. In <laughs> fact, in Norway today we have 17 degrees and sunshine, which is oh. very unusual for Norway. <laughs> Oh, thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, you are our first guest in Tuet Talks, as you know. Uh, I'm honored. <laughs> thank you so much. We are honored. Uh, so we will have a couple of questions to you, and I'm sure our followers will also have questions for you. Uh, I will also sometimes uh, translate it into Turkish for our followers who are not able to understand. Uh, yeah, my, words, Turkish yeah. Is, my Turkish is very poor, I'm afraid. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So how is everything in Norway? Let's start with that. Well, Nor Norway is faring quite good. School, uh, schools are opening uh, next week. We can go oh. to the shops and we can even go to restaurants. 
there aren't so many tables in the restaurants, but we we feel um, we've come over the top. Oh, great! Uh, so uh, we're we're very happy about that. Oh, good. <laughs> so good news from Nerd of you, and you also know the things. How yeah. is it going in Europe? Because I know that you are consulting many agencies in Europe. How is the things are in Europe? Well, everybody is in the same boat just now. We're just in different degrees of lockdown. Everybody's scrambling to find out what's going to happen to my business. So it's troubled times everywhere, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. So today, maybe we will open a different window to our followers. Uh, well, we have to look for the windows. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, well, in one night, everything disappeared. Our business has disappeared. So uh, I would like first to hear uh, what is your advice for the event companies? What shall we do nowadays? Well, I, I, I think, first of all, we have to realize that the future starts now. Oh. We're not going to come back to the old normal. The new normal starts now. And I think the first, the, my first piece of advice is to say, look for the silver lining. If you know there's an expression in English, every cloud has a silver lining, which means every problem creates new opportunities. Oh. And I know just now everybody um, are faced with problems, financial problems. What do you do with contracts and cancellations and rent and how do you pay your staff and so on and we have to deal with that of course but we need now to find some space to look at what are the opportunities right now for meeting planners and meeting designers and there are a lot of opportunities so number one look now for new opportunities how you can redefine your business how you can provide today the services that your customers need today the second thing is call your customers. Don't think that because you have nothing to sell to them at the moment, you have no need to talk to them. Call your customers. You're in the same boat, facing a common enemy that brings you together. Find out what is their reality right now. How are they managing to communicate? How do they manage to work remotely, have meetings remotely? And don't try to sell them anything, just listen and be there with them and they will appreciate that. And at the same time, you're doing some important market research to find out how can you adjust to the reality where your customers are now. And that's the second thing. So look for opportunities, call your customers, and then maybe the biggest, you have to embrace and start loving the online digital world. And that includes you, Meltem. <laughs> you have, I'm sorry. The world, <laughs> the world has just taken probably a 20-year jump into the future when it comes to digitalization. Our universities have gone online. Our schools have gone online. I just celebrated my grand book granddaughter's birthday online <laughs> and this is this is the new world now and people are starting to realize that hmm, I can work from home I can do a lot of things online that I didn't realize in some ways online meeting can be as good or maybe better than live meetings so we have to embrace the online and And then you're going to think, yeah, but I don't, that's difficult. I, I'm not an online person, okay? <laughs> We're all live event persons. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I need to say you? to you. I mean, for instance, the listen, human being, human being is a social, you know, a, ah, yeah, social. So sure. how we will socialize, not, you know, we cannot socialize yeah. always online. And events are social gatherings. So, yes. uh, for instance, there are weddings, there are birthday parties, and, you know, we want to dine out. So what's, what's going to happen to those uh, social activities? Well, we, I absolutely agree with everything you say. We need to share experiences, be physically together. But right now, 
We can't. Yes. So we we now we just we can't just lie down and and oh. go into hibernation for two years. Now those days will come back, but that will be a long time from now. And even our live meetings will be different from what they have been in the past. So you ask me, what should we do right now? Stop dreaming about the old world coming back sometime <laughs> in the future. Don't think, well, now I'm waiting for my business to come back. You're yes. going to be waiting a long time. And you're going to miss all the opportunities. So right now, it's the digital online meeting that is relevant. And when sometime in the future the live on-site meetings are back, those digital meetings are still going to be there. They're going to be in addition. There's, wow. going to, there's a huge market of online meetings, which is now being developed, and it's going to last forever. Hmm. The live meetings will be additional to those, and the live meetings will do all those things which you cannot do better online. Hmm, yeah. So online, so, so people will prefer online meetings rather than live meetings, you say? For certain things. And for certain and, 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 and don't think that it's a question of online or live. Most of the time it's a question of online or nothing. Hmm. So when people realize that, well, we can have regular meetings with our colleagues in Tokyo and New York and San Francisco because online meetings work very well. So mm -hmm. let's have more of those. Uh -huh, I and understand. then when we have and then we have the big meetings because we need still to have live meetings to develop yeah. relationships, to bridge cultures, to develop common identity and so forth. And our live meetings will focus on that only. Mm -hmm. I Our live meetings today are education and networking. Well, the education we can probably do better online. Yes. So we don't need in the future uh, an educational alibi uh -huh, yeah. to meet. We will meet for the purpose of meeting, creating friendships, understanding and bonding. And that's how the future events will be different. I understand. So this is a passage to future. So we'll find ourselves in future in in a very short time, I understand. <laughs> well, we are in the future now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so let me just translate in few words in Turkish to our followers. E, Doktor Elin e, Hamsoy'da e, aslında biraz güzel de haberler var. Şimdi ben şöyle sordum ona. Bir gecede bütün işlerimiz bitti, tükendi. E, biz e, ne tavsiye ediyorsunuz? Bu dönemde ne yapmalıyız dedim. E, kendisi de dedi ki bir kere hiç durmayın, müşterilerinizi arayın ve gökyüzünde bulutların bir gümüş çizgisi vardır ve biz bu gümüş çizgiye e, opportunity yani fırsatlar deriz. Bu fırsatları bakın, bu fırsatları bulmaya çalışın çünkü hiçbir şey eskisi gibi olmayacak ve dijital olacağız. Çok çabuk dijital dünyaya uyum sağlayın. Ee, özellikle de sen diyor çünkü benim dijitalleşmeyle ne kadar aramın bozuk olduğunu kendisi çok iyi biliyor. <gülüyor> ee, ve e, bu, bunun bir fırsat olduğunu söylüyor e, Doktor Edin Hamso. E, aynı zamanda muhakkak müşterilerinizle e, irtibat içinde olun. Birbiriniz yani onları muhakkak arayın ve aynı teknede olduğunuzu söyleyin diyor. Hiçbir şey eskisi gibi olmayacak. Şu an yarındayız. Yarın başladı diyor. Yani bir passage'da değiliz. Bir hani pasaj, bir geçitte değiliz. Biz başladık ona diyor. Ama çok sosyal varlıklarız. Peki bu sosyal toplantılar e, olmayacak mı dedim. Olacak ama online toplantıların yanında olacak. E, online toplantılar çok daha fazla olacak ve insanlar online toplantılarla çok daha hızlı olduklarını görecekler. E, ama ben eminim sosyal toplantılar e, işte e, biliyorsunuz düğünler, e, sosyal e, birliktelikler, akşamları yemeğe çıkmalar gene olacak. Bunlar online olamaz ama e, toplantıların çoğu online olacak e, diyor. So we have to be digital. We have to learn as uh, possible and as quick as 
uh, possible uh, to be online and to meet our customers online and uh, to show them the opportunities of uh, the uh, new uh, new era, let's say. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So, uh, what is the recovery timeline for the event industry, in your opinion? So, is there any timeline? Uh... Mm. I think you're really asking me if if my crystal ball is bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> But, so we don't know. We see, of course, now that many countries are passing the peak. And now the infection is slowing down, but then it may come back. And I just someone just said maybe next winter will be worse. Oh, wow. So we don't know. We don't know what the future will look like. But if we make some assumptions, I have my assumption for, for planning purposes. And one scenario would be that sometime this autumn, maybe late autumn, we can meet in one country in groups of maybe 50 mm -hmm. with a, a, a good social distancing and hygiene regime mm -hmm. but we can have small meetings of people so let's say that will start to happen in the autumn international meetings requiring travel between countries i think will be a long time i just read this morning that both microsoft and facebook have cancelled all meeting with more than 50 people until the summer next year. Oh, wow. Not good news. Um, <laughs> no, but it's not surprising. I think probably, or quite possibly, nothing is probable. But I guess, let me say, I guess that international travel, other than what is strictly necessary, will not happen until, hopefully, We have a vaccine yes and large numbers of people have been vaccinated and you may not be allowed on board the aircraft without a vaccination certificate mm. now we may have a vaccine in 12 to 18 months it's going to take another six months maybe for large numbers of people to be vaccinated so i think we're talking one, one and a half, maybe two years from now before we have large international congresses and, and so on. That's, that's my planning assumption for, for my business. So uh, at the moment, we're in a situation where online is the only thing that is possible. Um, When we get to the next stage with small meetings, then we can have small physical meetings and we can connect them around the world mm -hmm. online multi-city meetings and i've been in i've been at several of those years ago and they work extremely well oh. so that's the sort of the second second stage before much longer into the future we will see traditional large international meeting of physical people so That's my that's my crystal ball. It's not necessarily better than yours. <gülüyor> so let me translate in a few words. Uh, Doktor Edingham Soya, onun kristal küresinde bu dönemin ne zaman biteceğini sordum. E, aslında tabii çok iç açıcı değil. Diyor ki Eylül'den itibaren e, çok küçük toplantılar başlayabilir. E, ama diyor e, bunun kışın tekrar geri geleceği söyleniyor bazılarına göre. Ama bir, bir buçuk yıl içerisinde aşı olayı halledilirse tekrar toplantılar başlayacak. E, ama genellikle çok uzun destinasyonların içerdiği e, toplantıları Online yapmak zorunda kalacağız. Ee, bu yüzden diyor online'a geçitsin. Ee, tabii şimdi bu durumda e, maysçılar ne yapacak? Destinasyon düğünleri ne, olu ne olacak? Onu soracağım. What about destination weddings? Destination weddings and mice events, incentive events. Ee, they, some of them cannot be online. So we do it in one well. day. Well, I, I told you I was just attending my granddaughter's birthday <laughs> online. But maybe I can tell you, maybe I can tell you an, an example or a story. Every year on the 
Monday before IMAX in Frankfurt, I host a dinner of about 50 people. Yes. There's going to be no IMAX. There's going to be no dinner in Frankfurt. Now we are planning an online gala dinner. Okay? Yes. Uh, and it's a, it's a dinner and an annual general meeting of an association. Now, normally in Frankfurt, the formal program of the, of the meeting before the dinner starts at 9.30. We open the doors at 8.30, and these people who come from all over the world, they come gradually during that hour, and maybe they come for a while and go outside and come back in, and it's just unofficial, soft beginning of the meeting. Then we have some fun and games, and we have uh, the annual general meeting, which takes only 15 minutes, and then we have the dinner. Okay? After the dinner, and we say, okay, now the program's officially closed, uh, but you can stay and chat with your friends for as long as you like. You have to pay for your own drinks after now. <laughs> so how do we do this online? Well, we say, the dinner's going to be online. The meeting's going to be online. We start at 7.30, like we normally do. You go into the online application, which is called Zoom. And then every 10 minutes, we will put you in a random online group of three people that you can talk to. So even if you have 50 people attending, which we normally have, three people on the screen can have a, a nice conversation like we all have on FaceTime and whatever. And then after 10 minutes, we press the button, and I'm suddenly in a new group with three people. And it happens every 10 minutes. And actually, I think people will find they had an opportunity to talk to people they maybe didn't know. Uh, they actually had time to get to know those people for 10 minutes at least. Then during the dinner, we have probably will have tables of five. But that is five videos on your screen. And we'll change the table for the starter and the main course and the dessert, well, there won't be a meal. Maybe people bring some food in front of their computer. So again, you have opportunities to talk to just five people at a time, random people in this group. And of course, like normally, we'll say at one time, the dinner is over, but you can stay on screen and talk to people for as long as you like. Now, it's not the same as a live dinner, but for the purpose of meeting your old friends, talking face-to-face, -face. we're face-to-face -face now, Meltem. This is face-to-face, -face, <laughs> talking face-to-face -to, -face to your old friends. Well, this is a lot better than the dinner not happening, which is the only alternative. But so we have to use our creativity. Uh, I will ask, uh, somebody is asking a question. As a PCO, how can we profit financially from online meetings? Uh, she asks, Yasemin Dervişoğlu, how we will profit? Well, uh, you mean, can you charge for a meeting which goes online, for example? Is yes. That, that's the question. Of course you do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I, do, I do training programs which are live, and the yes. moment they go online, I say I will reduce the cost a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't have to pay for venue and catering but the price is the same mm -hmm. uh, if, why should it not be the same if you are able to offer a really good quality experience where essentially they get the same value back mm -hmm. if, you, if you as a PCO are organizing a medical congress or a scientific congress the primary purpose of, the, of that is sharing education experiences and so forth. You can do that online, and why should people not pay to attend that online? I don't, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so live online. Remember, it's not, it's not a recording. It's not just a webinar. It's a proper live online meeting. That's what you have to offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let me translate a bit. Uh, şimdi. Online meetinglere, online toplantılara çok alışacağız. Hatta bir gala yemeğini bile 
belki böyle yapabileceğiz diyor. Ben bunu yaptım IMAX'te diyor, Frankfurt'ta diyor. Ee, sanırsam ya ben tabii teknolojik olarak e, çok hakikaten e, bilgili değilim. Bir an evvel bu konuda belki bir kurs falan almam gerekecek. E, bir gala yemeğini online yapabilmişler. Böyle herhalde programlar var tahmin ediyorum ki. E, ve tabii biz bundan nasıl para kazanacağız diye sormuş Sayın Yasemin Dervişoğlu. E, bunu da da e, yine bir rakam charge edeceksiniz tahmin ediyorum ki. E, ben kongreci veya işte toplantı mitingci olmadığım için e, şöyle söyleyeyim. Bunun bir rakamı olacak. Bunu organize ettiğiniz için. E, ama tabii ki otellerden kazanılmayacak artık. Transferlerden kazanılmayacak artık. Ve insanların çoğu buna gidecek şeklinde anlıyorum. E, ben e, Dr. Eling Hamson'un söylediğini. So what kind of costs at our events must we expect at post-COVID-19 period? Will hmm. there be costs well, uh, for the event sorry. agencies uh, to, you know, hold? Uh, what is yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think we, pro I think a, a lot of us have got our fingers burnt right okay. now. And I think in the future, we will be much more careful to have large fixed costs. Maybe we'll think it's better to use freelancers than having too many employees. We will be careful with long-term rental agreements for our properties, for our offices and warehouses. We will be very careful that when we enter into those kinds of agreements, We have good, what's called force majeure clauses, so that if something like this happens, terrorism happens or floods happens or the Icelandic volcano blows again, then we have a, a legal agreement where we are able to get out of those kind of agreements. And, and the same with our customer contracts. Uh, now, uh, a lot of us are faced with cancellation clauses. Well, do we have to pay cancellation fees or not? So I think we'll be a lot more careful and we, we will check more carefully with, with the lawyers that we're not incurring commitments which will hit us badly yeah. if this ever happens again. I think we will be more careful, which we should always be and not borrow too much to make sure that we, in a crisis, have money in the bank so we can survive well we can't have enough man money in the bank to survive on our own for a long time but governments are helping us but they're not paying for everything so i think we will um, look at yeah. cost and our cost structure differently uh, there will be perhaps additional costs but not significant we need to we need to have you know the, the hygienic precautions and so forth we will do more risk analysis uh, for our events, but that's not a, a big cost item. Uh, so I think we'll be, we'll be more careful about cost, particularly fixed cost. We will be more flexible and agile financially. And we will, we will do like our mother said and our grandmother said, you should always have some money in the bank. <laughs> Well, uh, I will explain uh, in a few words in Turkish. Uh, Şimdi bizi ne gibi yani bize yüklenecek bütçeler olacak mı diye sordum. Elbette ki olacak diyor. Bir kere çalışanlarımızı da herhalde daha dikkatli seçip daha çok efektif kullanmamız gerekecek. Her zaman bir köşede böyle günler için bir köşede muhakkak bir rakam bir bütçenizin olması gerekiyor. Bu tip krizlerle boğuşabilmek için diyor. Benim kendi düşüncem bizlerden belli sertifikalar iste isteyebilir e, internasyonel işlerde. E, bu sertifikalar için belli bedeller ödememiz e, belli e, gereklilikleri de yerine getirmemiz gerekebilir diye düşünüyorum ben. E, dolayısıyla bu tip kostlar bizi muhakkak bekliyor olacak. E, people are asking about destination weddings, destination birthdays you know, people were, you know, for instance in Istanbul, in Bodrum 
Forum in Turkey, there are many couples coming to celebrate their weddings or their anniversaries. Uh, or here, from here, they are uh, flying to Paris with their friends uh, to celebrate their weddings. Indian, there are a lot of Indian weddings in Turkey, which are 500 guests and especially Indians are doing a lot of destination weddings. They are used to do that and they cannot do this online because they have, you know, in one wedding, they have six rituals uh, to mm. perform and they have for each event, they have a dress, for instance, on online, you don't see my dress. No? Look, I dress for you, but you cannot see. <laughs> Uh, so the ladies, they, you know, they won't be able to show their jewelries, their shoes, their, uh, you know, this is a culture. So uh, in a way, they should survive. They cannot be online. What is your, you know, uh, what do you think about those things? Well, I, I don't necessarily have good answers, but, and of course, uh, the online opportunity is different for different types of events. A scientific Congress can go online tomorrow. It's not a problem. Um, uh, I just told you we have online dinners. You can do that, but it's not the same. Yes. I know some countries have just changed their legislation, so you can get legally married online if it's only <laughs> a matter of getting the marriage certificate. But I think if you're in that business and... For those kinds of events where you do have to wait for people to be allowed to travel and meet physically, well, you can um, lie down and go into hibernation or, 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 or do something else. Or you can say, well, my skills as a wedding planner, as a designer of wedding experiences, can they only be used for live weddings? Are there now other opportunities where I will feel comfortable with my mm -hmm. skills and with what I do, with my people's skills, with my skills of creating atmospheres and, and so forth. And there are, but you have to rethink your business model. You may need to, you will need to look for different types of customers, but there is a huge business now developing yes. of online meeting, online uh, productions um, mm. uh, so uh, you need to look elsewhere but you have some fundamental skills and attitudes and experiences which can not only be applied to weddings I believe yeah yeah but, also but I don't have a ma I don't have a magic answer to that. <laughs> and also exhibitions for instance you know I, uh, when uh, an exhibition of Picasso comes to Istanbul, it's a great, you know, pleasure to go and see and, you know, to look at the painting uh, with your own eyes, you know, rather than looking at, you know, I can also see the picture, the painting uh, online, but it's another, you know, uh, joy uh, to see it yeah. in the exhibition. So exhibitions also should survive, you know, it cannot be yeah. online. Yes. Don't you think so? And it's the same with you can listen to music on your headphones yes. or you can go to a concert. Yes, you know. So, I, yeah. I I, you know, first of all, I think we, we just quickly have to accept those things which cannot happen and don't spend any energy to, to worry about that. That's the new reality. We can't have a lot of pe people into a museum. Online exhibitions have been around for 10 years. Yes. Uh, and they will probably now see a new spring, you know, a new growth. The technology has been developed for many, many years for online exhibitions. Um, but I think look for the opportunities now. Anything that requires people to meet face to face physically, yes. in particular internationally, involving international flight, well, we can forget about it for quite some time. And then you need to say, how can I now redefine my business, find new business opportunities, using what I know already and apply it somewhere else. And, and that's, that's, I think, the important mindset now. Yeah, yeah. We, so have, to become, we have to be entrepreneurs again. Yes. And, and, and there is a very big 
potential for developing like it's like a parallel events industry for the long term and it's online hmm. and so then the, yes. after a while the old face-to-face -face meetings will come back and I think we will have even more of them than what we've had in the past but the online new market is there and it's ready for anyone who decides to grab it. Oh, I understand. Uh, that's good news, you know. They will go parallel. If they go parallel, it's all right for me, actually. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Um... Uh, let me explain in Turkish in few words. Uh, şimdi bambaşka bir endüstri doğuyor arkadaşlar. Bambaşka bir endüstri, online endüstri. Yani bazı toplantılar evet online yapılamaz. Mesela onu söyledim. Ee, Yasemin Dervişoğlu çok güzel sorular buradan yolluyor. Ee, gerçekten mesela... E e, sergiler e, bir Picasso sergisi buraya geldiğinde biz o resmi online da görebiliriz ama burada o, o resmi hissederek sergiyi gezmek bambaşka bir şey dolayısıyla bunlar olacak e, bunların yanında ama online sergiler de olacak toplantılar olacak ama bunun yanında online toplantılar da olacak yani birbirine paralel bir endüstri daha doğuyor e, mümkün mertebe herkes online'da ne yapacağına da baksın ve bunun içinde çözümler e, sunsun ki geride kalmasın e, online endüstri doğuyor doğdu bile diyor e, o yüzden e, buna bir an evvel adapte olun e, diyor I'm looking at the, uh, somebody says Uh, as for the congresses, yes, they can be online, but it kills the networking aspect. What do you say about this? Well, I shall answer that. But before I answer that, yeah. I was just thinking as you spoke about the previous question you had, how can we, will people pay yes. For online? Yes. And, and there's something I'd like to add to that. You gave me a moment to yes. think now, you see, whilst <laughs> you're speaking in Turkish. Remember, when someone goes to a live meeting. They pay the fee, which is what the PCO earns money from, as well as commissions yeah. and other things. But they don't have to pay for travel. They don't have to pay for accommodation. They yeah. don't have to be away from their office for so long. Maybe they go to a, a, a live congress, which is three days on the other side of the world. Yeah. They'll be away from their work for a week. Yes. Now, all those additional costs, including the cost of being away from work, they are saving already. You can probably charge a bigger price for the ticket because the total price for the participant will be much less anyway. I, okay. So that was just something I remembered. And now your question was, no, I've forgotten your next question. Can you the repeat The question it? was, it will kill networking, it says. If no, it won't. It won't. No, no. It won't kill networking. Stop no. believing that. I, I, I can tell you, um, I, I attended a, a multi-city meeting three years ago. And I was in Copenhagen. Somebody else was in Lisbon, London, Johannesburg, and Basel. And this was, it's called the Fresh Conference. It happens every year. It's like experimenting with new meeting industry formats. And then this year, the organizer said, well, we're going to have online uh, discussion groups. And uh, I was in Copenhagen, and there was like, we were two or three people at the table in Copenhagen. On the other side of the table were three PC screens one from Johannesburg and one from Lisbon and one from London. And I was, and I was skeptical to this. Now, this was group discussions, but not exactly networking, but that you network, you learn to know people when you're in group discussions with them. That's one important mm -hmm. form of networking. And I came away from that thinking, this was really better. Better than if the five or six of us had been around the same table. And you know, the technology is so that when someone from Lisbon speaks on the screen that everybody in Copenhagen could see, 
in the speaker mode, we would see that person's full face picture on the screen. That person would get all our attention. The meeting automatically got more structured. So that's like a first stage of networking, which is, which is you know, having group, group conversation, group discussions. Come now to the, the networking, which is more like what you do at coffee breaks and you bump into people and you see an old friend at the other side of the room and you yes. hug and kiss. Well, the hugging and kissing is hard. <laughs> but we're going to do a lot of networking during that dinner in Frankfurt, which is not going to be in Frankfurt, that I, that I told you about. Ha being three people in an online program talking is absolutely networking. I mean, you call your friends up, you have long conversations with your best friend on the phone. But that works. You're building relationship with your friend. Same online. Remember, online is face-to-face. -face. I'm face-to-face -face where I can see only Meltem. <laughs> Meltem and I are in a face-to-face -face meeting just now. Yes. Remember that. So networking you can organize online. Yeah. So it doesn't disturb networking, you say, but uh, for the conferences or meetings, we can charge more because uh, they will save from traveling and uh, from hotel rooms. They will save from time. They will be at their, uh, you know, country. They won't be traveling. So maybe this uh, will be, uh, we will uh, charge more for uh, the participation of the Congress. But remember, Congress. before you charge more or the same, you have to deliver a really professional, professionally designed online experience. Professionally we're not talking, online online. <laughs> we're not talking about replacing your conference with a webinar here, you know, and it's two different things. Yes, I understand. So the online conference or meeting should be designed very well. We should be Absolutely. ready. Absolutely. So I'm Absolutely. translating in few words. Ee, şimdi diyor ki networking'i asla öldürmüyor, e, öldürmeyecek. Ben şu anda seninle yüz yüze bir toplantı yapıyorum ve ben de seni gayet iyi hissediyorum diyor. Nasıl para kazanacağınıza gelince şimdi insanlara e, e, tra, e, bir kere uçuşlardan e, büyük bir para save edecekler. E, otellerde konaklamayacaklar. Ama bu konferanslara katılım için e, aynı bütçeyi veya daha yüksek bütçeyi önerebilirsiniz. Çünkü bu sefer participate etmek için e, yani katılmak için bir bütçe ödemeleri gerekecek. Ama unutmayın diyor. Bu çok önemli diyor. Online konferansınızın profesyonelce çok iyi dizayn edilmiş olması gerekiyor diyor. E, bunu çok iyi hazırlamanız gerekiyor diyor. Yani burada ne kadar profesyonel olup etkileyici olursanız sizler o kadar e, kazançlı e, çıkacaksınız diyor. I'm looking to the other questions if they have. E, someone asks what you think about the AV and catering companies future? Well AV companies should be very very busy right now. Providing <gülüyor> the technology for online meetings. So I see a very bright future for them. Catering, of course, is something else. Uh, the catering business is during the lockdown is suffering everywhere. I am not aware of online catering. Mm -hmm. Mind you, <laughs> mind you, mind you, we have a plan. We haven't, we're going to decide in a meeting tomorrow for people who register for the online dinner that used to be in Frankfurt, if they yes. register very quickly, we will send them a bottle of a half bottle of champagne, which they can <laughs> drink in front of their screen. Now, that's very limited catering, I know. Yeah, But yeah. Uh, no, we just have to look at the reality of the situation. We have to forget those things which we can't do now yes. and forget them very quickly. And finally, and they will say, okay, Now I have time and capacity. I have my skills and my knowledge. How can I now do something different? Where are the new opportunities? What is the silver lining of this cloud? It brings big new opportunities. Yes.
E, şimdi catering firmaları için tabii diyor şu anda e, yapacak fazla bir şey yok. Zorluk içinde olduklarını biliyorum diyor. E, şu an için hakikaten e, ama ben e, bizim keyif aldığımız yemekte toplantılar, düğünler bu benim fikrim. Ve sosyal birliktelikler için her zaman catering firmalarına ihtiyaç olacağını düşünüyorum. Çünkü bu bizim yaşama sevincimiz. Ama bazı toplantılar kendisinde dediği gibi paralel olarak online'a geçecek. Bu firmaların tercihine göre değişecek. Ama e, sosyal birlikteliklerde e, bence e, biz yine e, paralel olarak e, farklı şartlarla e, yeni koşullarda diyelim tekrar e, birlikte olmaya devam edeceğimizi düşünüyorum. Catering firmaları için, keza düğün davet organizasyon firmaları için ve sosyal etkinlikler için muhakkak bu öyle devam edecektir. So, are we ready to virtual events uh, and how can we get ready for them? Well, I think as, a, as an industry or as a profession of meeting planners and meeting designers, we're not ready. I think we've tended to think that online meetings will never replace the on-site or the live meetings. And we want to believe that and we've tended not to take it seriously as a threat to our traditional business. Well, now we've had the wake-up call and we're not ready, but it's not difficult. Hmm. It's not difficult with your background from live meetings to learn what you need to learn to become an online meeting expert. You don't have to go to university. You don't have to go to long training courses. The, the things you need to know are quite simple. You have the answers in front of you, probably right now on your phone or on the internet, on YouTube. You can learn what you need to know about the technology, but there will be companies specializing in hosting the technology part of online meetings. There are people for many years who've been experts at designing the formats of online meetings, that maybe that's where we want to go. You have online meeting Moderators already, we will see many more people becoming professional at facilitating and moderating online meetings. So there are different directions in which you want to go. And maybe what you actually have to learn in terms of new skills, maybe that's 10%. 90% is your mindset. It's all in your mind. If you think it's difficult, it will be difficult. Right, Meltem? <laughs> it's difficult. If you me. can find that switch, boom, and you say to yourself, I'm at least, let's say, an average intelligent person. This online technology, online meeting design stuff is probably not rocket science. In fact, I've reason to believe it's quite simple. And I can learn what I need to learn online. And I can learn what I need to know in a very short time. Uh, some weeks, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, depending what you do. I can work with my colleagues remotely and we can practice and experiment I can work with other people anywhere in the world to practice and experiment and test different things. I can do everything I need to do, everything I need to learn online. If you do want to go and have online training on how to do online events, you can do that as well. If you go, for example, to, to a website called uh, Meeting designinstitute.org meeting design institute in one word you will find you can do anything from a two hour masterclass to a 16 hour three week training course on how to organize an online meeting 
the format design part, the facilitation part, the technology part, everything. Well, you can good. learn this. You can learn this very easily. You only have to find that switch in your head, convincing yourself that this is not difficult. Mm. You're an, an intelligent person. This is <laughs> this is dumb stuff. No, this is Martin you know, Vanessa's. Uh, that's well, Martin Vanessa. He 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 runs the Meeting Design Institute. Well, now I will tell so, to our followers, uh, I have met uh, Martin Maneste, you have introduced him to me in IMAX, yeah, uh, I yeah. think we were, or in Barcelona, I think we, I have met him in yeah. Barcelona, yeah. we have been together, yeah. Uh, yeah. let me tell this uh, to our followers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I spoke to... I spoke yeah. to Martin on the phone just before oh. we started, oh, really? and he just he was just finishing uh, an online design course for Australia. Yes. He did one yesterday for uh, for a group of twenty people in Brazil, oh. and he's doing another one uh, tomorrow morning. So we can't join my meeting at ten oh. o'clock, and I forget where in the world that was. So of course, this is an exploding uh, industry now. Everybody oh. see the potential, not replacing old meetings, but in addition to old meetings, and it's online live communication. Oh, great. So, so maybe he will be our next guest. I will write to him. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure he'd like to do that. I, I, will, I, will, I will recommend you. Lovely. Thank you so much. I will just translate this important part uh, to our followers. Şimdi diyor ki bir an evvel online meetingleri ve toplantıları nasıl e, zenginleştireceğinizi öğrenmeniz gerekiyor. Muhakkak diyor meetingdesigninstitute.org'a girin. E, Martin Manesta'yı bilmiyorum tanıyor musunuz? Beni el, Dr. Elin Hamso tanıştırmıştı. Yıllar evvel Barcelona'daki fuarda biz tanışmıştık. E, ç- ve bu... E, Meeting Design diye bir manifesto hazırlamış bir insan ve event etkinlik endüstrisinde çok önemli bir kişi. Belki gelecek sefere de onu burada davet ederiz. Şimdi onun meetingdesigninstitute.org org'a girdiğinizde online toplantıları nasıl zenginleştirebileceğinizi çok rahat öğrenebiliyorsunuz. 16 saatlik 3 haftalık bir kurs diyor. Bunu çok tavsiye ederim diyor. Hepinize tavsiye ediyor. Hatta biz tekrar burada misafir ederiz. Kendisinin uygun vaktini bulursak Martin Manesta'yı çok önemli bir isim. Etkinlik dünyasında bir isim. Ondan da öğrenir ve gerekirse de ben açıkçası e, şimdi hemen gireceğim bu canlı yayından sonra meetingdesigninstitute.org'a So um, everybody knows that not only event industry but the world will change with post COVID-19 and what kind of changes are we expecting and what will be the new normal? Cool. But before that, do we do we ha- do we have one more hour to talk about this? Uh, yeah. That's a big question. That's a big question. I will just finish because it's almost one hour, and then I will again open my life uh, uh, because in one hour, have... uh, it stops. in one hour, Instagram goes off. So I will uh, close now, okay. save our what we have talked, and then I will open and please send the request again. Okay. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, uh, okay. Bye for now. We'll see you again soon. Yeah. In few minutes, I'll be back. Şimdi kapatıyorum, save ediyorum. Çok önemli bir konuya geldik. Devam edeceğiz. Biz de kalın lütfen. E, çünkü çok az dakikalarımız kaldı. Bu önemli konuşmanın bölünmesini istemiyorum. Şimdi bitirelim önce. Evet. Hoşça kalın şimdilik. Evet. Şimdi.